Turning now to a break in a cold case that dates back to 1989. The remains of Jacob Wetterling, an 11-year-old boy kidnapped nearly 27 years ago, have been identified. Wetterling was 11 when he was taken from a rural road near his home in St. Joseph, about 80 miles northwest of Minneapolis. Danny Heinrich, a longtime suspect, led authorities to the spot where Jacob's remains were found. Jamie Yukis is in Minneapolis outside Jacob's family's home. Uh, Jamie, you have covered this story in the past. Give us a sense of the timeline that led to this discovery. Well, that's, I have to tell you, I grew up in Minnesota, and it's something that really changed the lives of both children and parents here in the state. This is one of those communities. We're standing outside Jacob Wetterling's childhood home right now. His parents still live here. They have for 26 years. Every year on October 22nd, the day that Jacob disappeared, they put their porch lights on, and it's something in this community that everybody does, hoping that Jacob would come home alive. This is not the ending that anyone here in the state of Minnesota wanted, and having grown up here. The way it changed people's lives is that Jacob went with his brother and a friend to a convenience store to rent a movie. They got on their bikes. They went to the convenience store. It's something that we all did here in Minnesota, especially even us city kids who would go up to northern Minnesota to the cabin. Uh, you often did that where you got with your friends and family and, and you went to the convenience store. You went and got ice cream, that kind of thing, and then would just come home. Uh, and you did it without adults or parents around. And this was the case that really changed that for everyone. Everyone. But I can tell you, I mean, it's something that was reiterated over and over again yesterday when people heard that this case uh, had been solved and that it was this tragic end, that the loss of innocence had happened here in Minnesota. And Patty Wetterling then went on, uh, she and her husband, to establish the Jacob Wetterling Foundation. She's done just tons of work for missing and exploited children. She even was able to get Congress to pass laws in terms of sex offenders and having registries in each state here in the United States. So this is a case that not only uh, really changed the lives of Minnesotans and, and those here in the Midwest, but it, it really had repercussions across the country in terms of the laws that we now see for sex offenders. Uh, Jamie, explain to us what the feeling there is now. The feeling is really of sadness. I have to tell you that when you go online, especially to social media, there are so many people who really felt like uh, having grown up here, as I said, that Jacob was one of us. I was a child around Jacob's age when Jacob was abducted. And there are so many in my generation who felt like we knew Jacob, even though we we didn't really know him uh, because it was a face that had been on milk cartons and billboards. And he really became the poster child for child abduction and for trying to bring these missing and exploited children home. He's somebody we all knew. He had this beautiful smile. It's uh, really burned into your into your mind. And I can tell you, it's just really sad. People are, are just deeply saddened for the family. Uh, I think everyone I talked to yesterday said, boy, we're so glad that the family now has closure, but we're so sad that this is the way that it ended. I can tell you, too, people have been dropping off uh, flowers here and there. The Wetterlings have come out and gathered some of those. There was uh, somewhat of a larger memorial this morning at They've been gathering that up, but people, you know, even driving by just a few minutes ago said, you know, we really just want to express our condolences. We know that Patty and Jerry Wetterling have really, since the day Jacob disappeared, ha they never lost hope. And now for this to be the ending to this is just really tragic. Absolutely. Uh, I wonder, Jamie, what do we know about Daniel Heinrich? He was named a person of interest in this case last October. Yeah, there's been so many twists and turns uh, with Danny Heindrich here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, he was arrested earlier last year um, for, uh, they had taken a DNA sample from him, and it was another sex assault uh, that he was connected to in that case. And so from what we've been hearing, it sounds like he finally told the FBI where these remains were located based on, after that arrest, uh, that he's been working out some type of plea deal. But we know that he's a suspect in at least eight other sexual assault cases here in the state of Minnesota. This is a rural area of Minnesota, as you said, about 80 miles northwest uh, of the Twin Cities metro area. And I can tell you that uh, the locations, it's about a 20 mile radius then here in north central Minnesota as to where these sex assaults happen. And because of this new DNA uh, that they were able to gather from him, that's how they've been able to go back and start connecting him. Uh, but as I said, there are eight open cases right now where he's the prime suspect, but they have not been able to tie him 
to those cases just yet. Uh, he's somebody, though, that was really well known within his neighborhood. Neighbors uh, were often scared of him. Uh, they had heard different pieces of information about him. They knew he had been questioned before in Jacob Wetterling's disappearance. He had always denied his involvement in Jacob Wetterling's disappearance. But of course, we now know uh, that he led the FBI and authorities to those remains at a farm about 20 miles from where I'm standing right now. Tragic end to this absolutely uh, devastating case. Jamie Yukas, thank you so much.